behalf of Next Gen Scientists Foundation, I welcome you all to this event. We at Next Gen Scientists Foundation promote Indian life science students to pursue a career in science. And as a part of this initiative, we are running the NGS internship program, which offers financial support to Indian students who wish to undertake internship at any good lab in India. In an attempt to promote science communication, we also have an annual essay writing competition. Since last year, we have built an online Discord based platform, the Indian Life Science Network, for encouraging seamless communication between life science students across the globe. Please do ask questions uh, if you have in mind. Please raise the hand, uh, raise hand icon, and I shall put you on stage. Today, we are honored to have with us Dr. Shongram Bagh from Shaha Institute of Nuclear Physics. He earned his PhD from the University of Toronto and did his postdoc studies at MIT. Dr. Bagh has been making significant contributions to the field of synthetic biology. Hello, sir. We are really honored to have you with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Chetanay, and thank you for inviting me, and thank you all the audience uh, who are in this uh, channel at this moment. So, sir, we'll uh, start off with the questions. Uh, like, this is a general discussion about the course of your journey. Why, why, why you chose research over other career options? So, uh, uh, basically, I uh, uh, my undergraduate degrees are in chemistry, and then be taken chemical technology, or the specialization in the petrochemical engineering. So. It is an unusual, I mean, it feels as unusual choice from a chemical engineering field to directly in the synthetic biology. But uh, uh, in my personal journey, what uh, I found, uh, so during my uh, uh, university BTEC days, uh, I read a um, uh, book. I mean, probably you have seen this movie, is the Jurassic Park. So I have also seen yes. this movie okay. and that is good. But when I was reading that uh, Jurassic Park, uh, the actual book uh, uh, written by Michael Crichton, I thought this is something the bioengineering that could be is then very important because this if you if you read that book, it is not just telling that how to make a dinosaur. They're talk, bringing a lot of different technology. Uh, I mean, it is science fiction, but uh, in this a, a concept of the technology, concepts from the nonlinear dynamics, the chaos system, and so on, so on. And this has a uh, lot of those things has a connection, direct connection with the chemical engineering. So I, I realized that probably this is the this is the thing I want to do. So uh, that day I decided I w want to do uh, research on biological engineering and I was searching for it. And definitely uh, in India, you uh, at least that time. So I'm talking about it's 2002 or sometime. Uh, it was very difficult yeah. to actually go from one branch to another branch, specifically from you are uh, this kind of uh, you are in chemical engineering and you want to go to the biology. So that was that's that time I was really searching what uh, can be done. And uh, 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 but as you, I mean, uh, that's a different story. But what as I can say that this is the my the first inspiration that I want to uh, come to this uh, uh, field of research. And later, I just want to mention one thing that uh, that time I couldn't tell anyone because it's it looks like a very weird choice. Just reading a book, you want to deciding your life uh, uh, destination. But later, when I found either in the University of Toronto or the MIT, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my professors who were in the different fields like the physics and my PhD supervisor was from the space engineering. So he never studied biology throughout till his, post, uh, till his PhD. So many of those wow. people actually <laughs> came to this biological engineering just because of the one thing, and that is the Jurassic Park. I have actually seen this many <laughs> people actually inspired by. So one of them is Professor Zhang is in the MIT now. And probably you probably heard this. There's a patent war between the CRISPR-Cas9 between the MIT yes, and yes. the Berkeley. And I mean, yes. MIT Harvard, that broad institute. And yes, Zhang also told me that he got interested in the biology uh, because uh, of the Jurassic Park. So uh, that's a, a life changing for a lot of uh, lot of us. Yeah. Great, but that means you must have faced uh, quite some hurdles and challenges during your PhD since you were cha shifting fields suddenly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, so in 
in one aspect is the first uh, mm, so uh, i joined after my btech i joined ncbs uh, as a jrf but again this okay. is uh, that time it was a biology and biochemistry kind of things but i was looking for the biological engineering so that i could not find in the ncbs so uh, that mm. time that's why i moved uh, abroad and that mm. uh, and i did the ms uh, from university of saskatchewan that is on the single molecule spectroscopy still i couldn't find this biological engineering thing and then suddenly i found that the university of toronto david macmillan joined there and he's uh, when i was reading his uh, research i thought oh this is the research i want to do so i uh, uh, applied there i got in the university of toronto and i uh, joined uh, uh, dave's lab so from there i never i mean that's my field i uh, i figured out that is the thing so now in terms of the uh, what you are seeing uh, in terms of uh, uh, the struggle i think the struggle yes. was to get there not when you are inside the field because this is i mean i know that there is uh, many of your students are uh, probably from the undergraduates and uh, and the postgraduate uh, stream so one thing what we learned in india i mean it is a cultural thing that you cannot switch fields because it, it's come some completely different or something but when i was in the, in the field i found that it is uh, uh, it is easy to learn the other fields it, i mean it is not easy in the other way around but it is not difficult uh, to learn the things because uh, i got this inspiration from my professors who came from the completely space engineering thing to doing this the biology so and it is uh, it is a it's though it's not a norm so i have found many people who are actually shifting the fields it is coming from the engineering to the biology or from going to the biology to the chemistry from chemistry to the physics even one of my uh, 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 colleague i mean he was doing my phd with me at the university in the same lab he came from the astronomy he has a uh, his ms is in astronomy but he chose to do this kind of the synthetic biology so Uh, there is no harder when you are learning new things because it is very exciting thing you are learning new things you are connecting with your own uh, background to a new thing that is really exciting and i don't think it is uh, a struggle at uh, any cases from a, even i can find my students who are doing the phd uh, in my lab uh, most of them are coming from the completely biology field but when we are doing some of the engineering uh, Uh, design and some of this uh, mathematical modeling now they at the very beginning they thought they could not do that but when they have started doing it they find uh, that's not difficult what people used to think it is difficult so i feel that uh, going from one field and another field uh, is an exciting journey and it is not difficult right so when there is a will there is a way <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's true so so then what kept you motivated i mean it's very obvious for phd students to sometimes get depressed over not getting proper results and other things and you stayed outside of your home way away from your country so what kept you motivated i think it's just not uh, just not me so in, in, because i found to the other phd students because who were the friends who were doing the similar kind of things i think the motivation is the excitement of that science so the frustration definitely comes frustration definitely comes because you are not getting results and most of the phd uh, throughout the, i think that throughout the research career is much more failure than the success so there is a frustration but there should not be any depression so because the excitement of the science what you really want to do if you are when you are doing it uh, we are going through the path there is no uh, depression frustration yes no depression it will always keep you motivated and for, 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 as a phd student uh, you also know this probably you are working uh, 10 to 12 hours a day uh, sometimes is 7 yes. days a week something like that but you can only do this kind of the work when you are excited about your work frustration yes no depression right absolutely correct sir so then sir you later moved on to mit for your post doctoral study so how was your life at mit this is the same i mean the you know, either in the university of toronto or is the mit uh, there is not uh, much change in, in the life in terms of the science as well as the terms of the other cultural life because uh, they both are very good universities and uh, uh, the, the, and there is a lot of uh, uh, 
cross talks between a lot of uh, people like a lot of nobel laureates so for example even in the university of toronto uh, when i used to talk the uh, couple of nobel laureates were there and so it's so one very important thing of their culture uh, compared to the our culture is i as a student got respect so this is i uh, i may be wrong but i feel uh, as a student getting a respect in our country uh, is little difficult right i never thought that as a student i can uh, uh, be respected and when those guys used to uh, in uh, either in the mit or the uh, university of toronto there is a lot of big guys and when they used to talk with me or the other students it looks like uh, we are colleagues it is not that we right. don't have a we are. so this is a very important thing to be included uh, in the culture i think this inclusion in an academic culture is very important and when i got included in that culture then i uh, never feel i am isolated that's true sir i absolutely agree with you on this point so sir uh, i mean it, it was during your phd first that you came across the principles of synthetic biology because in india it is a very late development so it must be there either in your during your phd or your postdoc yeah so it is from the phd because even i started my phd in 2006 so uh, uh that time uh, even the uh, synthetic biology is very nascent stage so there is a, so uh, 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 only a handful of people throughout the world uh, are doing this synthetic biology even uh, the synthetic biology so i uh, so i found myself is actually uh, be one of the part of making this uh, synthetic biology uh, definitely a small part but definitely i was the part of this whole journey so even uh, at current moment i can't say that synthetic biology is a completely a, a, a matured field uh, like the other fields what uh, we see like a cell biology or uh, cancer biology or the nanotechnology or something still it is in the building of the phase so definitely uh, you see in india uh, uh, so if you see the throughout the world the most thing is definitely in the us because uh, synthetic biology is developed by a few couple of the engineers uh, who want to study the biology from a different engineering perspective and then it uh, moves uh, is going through the europe later stages you find uh, see uh, many people are working in the europe uh, uh, then in china and uh, uh, japan korea and so on and there is a few people uh, in india at this moment are working on the synthetic biology so as any other fields actually grow in this way uh, uh, i mean if you feel the other fields too so yes uh, this is also nascent in the world but also it is uh, uh, nascent in uh, you know india yes so sir how would you define synthetic biology like we have many undergraduate students and postgraduate students who are most probably not very well versed with this term so how would you define it okay so you can first thing you can see if, if you look at the terms so there is a synthetic which is means unnatural and the biology so uh, throughout uh, whatever the biology research has been done to date you can see uh, it's the biology is very natural because we are uh, working on the life so when we are coming about this a uh, synthetic biology some unnatural so means we want to develop biology by building like in, because the term synthetic does not come from uh, the synthetic chemistry many people actually thought that synthetic biology is something when you are synthesizing dna and sub because it is coming from the synthetic organic chemistry no synthetic uh, biology synthetic term came from the engineer synthetic engineering like making a computer like making a device uh, where you are uh, uh, following a set of rules to make those kind of thing so if you go to the google and search for the synthetic biology you will find a very different kinds of uh, vague uh, definitions but uh, a common thing will every will think it is a design based biology so you are rebuilding biology by uh, attaching lot of biological parts uh, and make some the new function so so this way it is a very broad definition but if i see the history and what is the future of the synthetic biology and want to put in in the definition so if you see the genetic engineering is also in one way you can say synthetic biology can you say but actually the whole like because in genetic engineering you are making something which is not present uh, in the nature so that is one way that is synthetic 
However, right. the difference between the synthetic biology and this genetic engineering is in genetic engineering is a trial and error process. So, for example, if you want to make a, 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 a biotech, I mean, a genetically engineered crop, then basically you are uh, putting some genes couple, or tweaking couple of genes and it takes a long time because you don't know even if you're putting a, another gene doesn't going to give you the uh, 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 the proper behavior. So this is a trial and error at certain point you see that this gene is working properly with that plant so you can actually think about that. But whereas the synthetic biology looks a different view. So now it is uh, whenever I give a presentation I show, I show the slide that see that when we think about the engineering we like uh, making a computer and something and or some space safe and something we know everything about it but that's kind of the engineering but we cannot make a pegasus or in bengali which is called the pokhiraj ghoda which is basically the horse have two wings so in any way we could not even make a thought experiment how we, which genes need to be changed uh, during the development of the horse to make the wings on that so this is because we do not know what is the fundamental design principle of the biological system. So the synthetic biology wants to see the biological system and an engineering system. And when you build, a, you start understanding the design of this biological system and start building based on the design. So now, the, for example, when you want to make a computer, so you have some uh, uh, transistors and the chips you, uh, and those you connecting them together to make a kind of uh, modules or the device and this, those modules are connected to make the whole computers and you have a proper well established design principle. Now, if you come to the uh, biological system, we cannot build the cell. But what we can think about that, that the connection between uh, various genes and the proteins actually follow a lot of uh, similarity with this kind of the electronics or electrical engineering principles. So if we at this moment, if we can actually borrow some of this principle and develop some biochemical reactions, which will work as a biological gets instead of the electronic gets, where in biological gets your inputs are some biochemicals and your output some biochemicals. So you make these bio, uh, biological reactions and then connect them together in terms of different genes and the proteins you, uh, you name it and develop a lot of different kind of biological circuits following the same principle from the electrical engineering. Then by, by from a design perspective, you can generate some new uh, functions in the biological cells or you can design completely uh, you can reprogram the cells or you can design a lot of new programs in i mean new uh, uh, functions in the biological cells completely from a design uh, perspective and here that another difference between the genetic engineering with the synthetic biology here you are not using a single gene or protein but you are using a lots of different genes a promoters a total network you are engineering inside the cell so that is the fundamental difference between the genetic engineering and synthetic biology. Great. So once again, if any one of you have any have any question, please raise your hand. I'll put you on stage so that you can directly ask him. Okay. So we have uh, we have gone through your lab website and we found that you are doing a lot of cool stuff in your lab, like artificially making bacteria intelligent and engineering them to perform specific tasks. So why do you feel it is important to make bacteria intelligent? Okay, so again, as I said, the, the very first thing about uh, uh, the why I do science, the very first thing uh, I do is from excitement to the science. Okay, so I love to think about some problem, uh, those kind of the problem which are uh, uh, very exciting to me. That is the very first thing. And definitely the students who are working under me, somehow uh, uh, they get interested on those ideas. So there, so there's the very first answer. Second answer, if you see scientifically why these are very important. So, so what we do, our goal is to, if we can make, as you uh, instance, so one of the goal is that can we make bacteria artificially intelligent? So. When you make this intelligent uh, bacteria, bacteria is a micron scale. Now, what, what, when you are talking about this artificially intelligent bacteria, which is basically means that we are using, we are using this bacteria to do a lot of different computation. Now, imagine there is no computer 
at the micron level. You cannot have a computer or a robot at the micron level who is solving the problem. The one uh, uh, why you cannot bring a computer or the robot because you need a material based system which has must have a dimension more than the micron. At the very same time, there's a lot of circuits and everything has to be there and you need energy like the, the battery. Sir, I think you are muted. Okay, sorry about that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, in the micron size, there is no uh, uh, computer or a robotic systems are possible. But if you the actually cells like the bacteria or any mammalian cells, even the yeast cells, all those kinds of cells are real in the micron size. So now, if you can actually engineer them to do lot of computations, uh, uh, then you are bringing a whole computers in, in the micron level. And it could have a lot of different kind of the application. For example, people talked about uh, 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 like uh, uh, if you inside your body, there is a disease state. So if you have an engineered cell, which can actually compute the uh, different uh, 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 metabolic signatures about that particular disease states and take a, def uh, take a decision to actually uh, make that conditions go away, the bad disease condition go, go away. So those kind of the computation can be done by the cells if you engineer those cells in the micron level. So there's, there's a lot of use people can think about in the, uh, uh, the medical field. So this is the one reason, uh, that is the one importance that why you need to do this uh, bacteria and something and uh, you bring it and them, uh, I mean, you engineer them to make a artificially intelligent or something. Second thing is that, now think about the intelligence and the consciousness from a biological perspective. So whenever people under, try to understand the intelligence, definitely from our brain and this uh, neuronal uh, different kind of the, the structures um, and our behavior, our different animal behavior. And another is the artificial intelligence through the computation. So there is a, always a, a debate that if you can develop a, but, but, uh, consciousness through this computer, forget about the consciousness because we do not know any of the comp consciousness, but even this general purpose intelligent computer, you can make like a human being. So, uh, so, so there's a two ways to understand this intelligence at this moment. But in biological intelligence, as neurons are doing, so what we are asking the question that what would be the design principle of the intelligence? Because when we are making some bacteria uh, intelligence, whatever that means, uh, even this is a very uh, low level of the intelligence. So here we are building things, which basically means we are building the intelligence by integrating different uh, genetic uh, genetic circuits, the different molecules and following a particular principle which you borrow from the artificial intelligence and the computation. So it will give the understand or building things uh, or building intelligence from the scratch. So this will give a under, uh, fundamental understanding of the chemical or biological nature of the uh, intelligence. Uh, that's, uh, that's I feel this is also important. Yes, sir. so that means you're referring to the biobots, as in the ones which can be utilized for treatment of disease by injecting inside and uh, helping in elimination of that. So uh, in that respect, I have a question like uh, bacteria, obviously, it's prokaryotic in nature and it will elicit some immune response. So how would that be tackled? Okay, so this question I'm getting over and over for a uh, very long time. I think uh, uh, this is important to understand that when uh, somebody said that if I put, I mean, inject some bacteria in the inside the cell and it will go for an immune response, the question is how many, exp I mean, where, I mean, it's all biological students or everyone actually asked this question, but before giving this answer, I also asked this question, where did you study that if you uh, 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 inject one bacteria, your uh, immune system will give an immune response uh, so bad that uh, it will make a harm? Probably you haven't studied it any book that is specifically written if you inject some bacteria, okay, and it is giving these terms. People showed that there is, for example, there is a clinical uh, uh, trial has been already been done because the idea of the bacteria using um, uh, killing some cancer cells is not the very uh, new things. It's very, very old thing. I mean, in the 100 years old, people actually use the bacteria to kill tumors and that's uh, really happened. So the whole problem 
now we know that there is a lot of clinical trials has happened and they showed this for example the uh, e coli some uh, attenuated salmonella you can if you inject inside the body it is not giving enough immune response to uh, uh, give a harm to the body so that is uh, clinically proven num uh, uh, number one uh, so that is your question right i think yeah so that yeah yeah one. yeah so the, uh, it is not giving so another way that people you can i can tell you so for example people are trying this mm. uh, so in a red blood cell in our red blood cell so there is a, yes. a protein which i forgot the name of that protein so if you any material if you coated with that particular protein then and if you mm -hmm. inject so your body cannot uh, distinguish between the foreign and things so people are also thinking that using that protein coated uh, protein coated bacteria that can be done but as i said this is a clinically proven there is a clinical trial and that clinical trial actually proves that uh, at least in the three cases e coli attenuated salmonella and the third one i am forgetting that uh, if you this three bacteria if you actually inject uh, in a human body this is not going to give you a uh, immune response so that it can harm a uh, human body definitely with the dose definitely it has some dose yes okay sir so uh, we uh, i mean you are also into space research so uh, how do you feel engineered bacteria would be useful for this purpose yeah so i think then we can talk about that this is so the whole idea of the synthetic biology you have a extremely well controlled things so you can make a lot of well controlled things now when i am saying you are saying i am in the space research and this is the biobirds it looks completely different but they are only on the same fundamental principles that because i can engineer them so precisely and through a, a particular kind of a design and you can actually get to that design so it can have a lot of different usefulness now when we are coming to this space because the whole idea of the uh, human space travel is not now for example at this moment uh, Uh, people are planning to go to the mars okay now when people are going to the mars this idea is not as the same as going to the moon because that time uh, human wanted to show that this is we can go moon and come back so that is a big leap for the human kind as you in neil armstrong actually said in a similar term right so now when you are going to the mars the whole idea is not to show that we can go to the mars so what do you need we need to make a research based on the mars so that's plan is going on that but the whole problem is if you go to the mars and make a research base and come back it is going to take uh, years because several months you have to take to go to the mars coming back several months and you have to stay there so if you are staying a year like 5 to 6 astronauts are going from the earth to the mars then how you are bringing those resources your food your medicine your clothes and your all necessary thing you cannot bring them and all, when you are making uh, the research base on the mars you cannot sustain that research base based on the resources you want to bring from the earth so the whole idea it is uh, to use the resources of the mars okay whatever the resources they have the carbon dioxide the little amount of the water probably and then and the, the a lot of uh, uh, metal oxides and something what is in the mars surface you have to use those uh, uh, resources to make everything starting from your radiation resistance habitat to starting from your materials starting from your food starting from your energy starting from your drops and everything so the whole question that if you want to do this is called the in situ resource utilization now as you cannot okay. take the resources from there because it will take us a mm. lot of money because you know so whole idea you take few vials of engineered organism because few vials of the engineered organism does not take much space or the weight or the much payload in your space ship so those those engineered organism will use the mars uh, whatever the things you have the mars and they will make everything mm -hmm. for you so that is the idea okay that's very exciting yes so uh, similarly sir do you feel that in the near future bacteria might be used such engineered bacteria to store information like we store in computers sure sure so sure. for example there is a 
complete the whole bunch it is not the bunch of the synthetic biology as say but uh, but this is called a dna computation so people know that you can actually put information in the dna for example if you a, 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 i mean i just give an example like okay, if you take 1 gram of dna okay you can extract from any human cells or bacterial cells because 1 gram we i mean who, who are working in the biological lab 1 gram of the dna is nothing for us but that 1 gram of the dna yes. can contain information as the same as if you take a like a you know the dvd player so if you let's say you have a art and you uh, uh, you just put uh, uh, you just cover the art with the dvd player so you can imagine how many dvd players would be there so the, that amount yes. of the information you can store only in 1 gram of the dna so many people are working that how to put a, a complete uh, uh, information in the dna in the synthetic biology uh, people showed that even you uh, you take a movie a colored movie and take that movie information you code and put inside the chromosome so in a chromosome of the yeast the people actually shown so definitely there is a uh, many ways you can put a lot of information uh, uh, inside your chromosome of the dna great so it's very exciting field of research which is eventually opening up so sir uh, what are the prospects of this synthetic biology in india and what are the challenges that you face in general i think the prospects are enormous so it is not only in the india but if you see in the world level the how uh, how many governments so if you if you just just start synthetic biology european union something like that you'll find there's the european union uh, 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 the nsf and every every other country and everyone is try to uh, give a synthetic biology uh, that's saying that's the next 50 years or 100 years the, the people feel that the, what is our economy at this moment many of them are basically the chemical economy it is completely going to change to the bio economy because people believe that all the chemicals we are making all the uh, fuels all the chemicals the drugs even the materials and everything will be made Uh, uh through the biological means so people now there is a lot of white papers if you go to the, uh, uh, the just search that uh, those kind of the white papers that bioeconomy or something so now people do know that the our economy is going towards the bioeconomy but why they are going to the bioeconomy because due to the biotechnology or the kind of the synthetic biology where you can do a lot of different control in these things so that is actually changing the economy towards the bio economy so that is the whole watch now when you are talking about the india and other country there is one thing so let's say as a phd student anyone if they do a phd then they want to get a job right that is the one important part and that job is you get in the two so if you go to the us or europe there is a two area sir you are muted again yeah yeah so uh, sorry so there are two areas you can get the job so one is definitely the faculty positions and very research in different research institutes and so on government labs and second is the uh, industry so uh, if you see in terms of the industry in the uh, us and the europe in the synthetic biology every day there is a new different companies are adding up they are bringing a lot of funds and there is a huge amount of the jobs uh, in terms of the synthetic biology and this in india one fundamental problem it is not just for the synthetic biology for any biology or uh, related fields is that there is a not of uh, there is there are lack of industries which can actually absorb the phd students so this is uh, very important because that's why our students are always so the very first thing they will go for a post doc but what they will do after that i mean if you want to come back to india either they want to get a faculty position or they want to industry so that industries are not uh, uh, many more in uh, india at this moment but however in terms of the synthetic biology the government of india actually found that uh, synthetic biology is probably is the one of the future uh, uh, for the indian biotechnology so uh, there are couple of uh, companies uh, which are uh, developed in india which based on the principle of the synthetic biology and governments are giving a lot of funds and uh, i think many iits isers um, uh, they are interested to uh, hire uh, synthetic biologists so i think 
uh, in terms of the research and the job and think synthetic biology in india is uh, uh, is a good option at this moment okay now since uh, this particular field of biology deals with genetic manipulations so there must be certain regulations which are applicable to it yes so then when you are doing a genetic manipulation the same kind so the department of biotechnology they do have a, a biosecurity uh, norms in space uh, uh, in place so uh, through which so this is the same kind of the genetic engineering regulations you are going to follow uh, in the synthetic biology so there are two areas so for example when people in the synthetic biology one applications is you are doing inside the bacteria and yeast to make different kind of chemicals and the drug molecules uh, which used to be uh, done uh, uh, through the chemical synthesis uh, so now you want to do in this so this kind of things are uh, done in a very controlled environment in a reactor so it is an industrial setting so people are changing the genetics of the bacteria for a long time so those things are definitely in the space but at the very same time as synthetic biology principles and the tools are going to be uh, 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 getting more robust um, uh, uh, and uh, so then uh, the things are coming that you can also engineer uh, those kind of the bacteria and something for a very bad or harmful purposes so uh, that definitely i mean that probably just by the genetic engineering you could not do like 20 years back but probably today because we have the enough tools to do those kind of things so that is something uh, uh, we should think about but the other in terms of the genetic engineering part the regulations are there okay so sir as you mentioned that there are certain aspects which need to be changed in 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 the indian scenario in general for promotion of science what are the specific changes that you feel should be implemented to push indian science to the top okay i don't know this is a very difficult question um, uh, because i am not in a position to uh, i'm probably i'm not qualified one to give you the suggestion that how indian science can be improved but what i can uh, i cannot tell what should be done but what i can tell what i think uh, what should be done so one yes. important says i give so for example when a so first i give the practical purpose the for example when a student love science and uh, he or she wants to do a phd because he loves science is uh, want to do some research so the very first thing it will come to our mind that definitely at least after 3 4 years when they are finishing phd what will do next right so this is important for the job as i uh, 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 said uh, already before in terms of synthetic biology but it is from any biological perspective we needs a lot of industry who are hiring um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 some 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 phd in the biology so that industry that level of the industry are not present in india uh, at this moment through uh, just the government institutes or some universities you cannot promote the whole uh, scientific Uh, or technological uh, uh, workforce of india in this moment uh, in, not anywhere in the world so this is very important that how many many industries should come who are going to actually accept this phd because we need the research and proper research and developmental uh, 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 fields in uh, in biology not only the synthetic biology but any biology so i don't know how this can be done but one thing if you found that nowadays many people specifically in the computer specifically from the engineering field they are producing lot of start startup companies uh, just from a, a certain areas so even if you uh, uh, see there's a lot of engineers are developing some companies who are working who are going to work with the isro or the nasa to make some of the space modules and something come to the space engineering which we could not think about even 20 years back so in other fields uh, uh, we can in, in the chemi chemical engineering and all this engineering fields i even in the biotechnology field we can see there is a lot of uh, uh, startups are coming specifically if you see the delhi iit uh, they are doing as a very uh, great thing in terms of the startups so now the psd so so so, so those kind of the uh, so those are the, the company Which which are hiring the PhD students, right? So any biotechnology company, any biotechnology startups, they definitely are hiring because just 
few days back very interestingly i found so when i uh, i used to uh, take some class in uh, uh, baligan science college and in the biotechnology department and i found there is a poster and it is some biotechnology company they are asking for 12 uh, internship position for the msc biotechnology students and i could not imagine that 20 years back this kind of things are happening so this those things are happening but very negligible scale we have to increase that that is the from uh, that is the one part and second part is uh, if you see uh, uh, the students i mean the students salary and the uh, 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 the stipends and what you uh, people that get in the jrf i found for many uh, uh, actually gathered from many of my students and uh, alike uh, sometimes their stipends are very irregular and that is yes. uh, that is very bad because a student after passing the msc they are going to do some 5 years of the work and 10 to 12 hours uh, a day for 6 to 7 days a week so for there this kind of things uh, should not be there so there should be a very uh, um, regular kind of the salary is very important just because otherwise people if you, if that if you find from your seniors that you are not getting salary properly then probably you will uh, you think twice to go in this kind of the uh, phd so we need some incentives in terms of the uh, not the scientific i'm just in terms of even the monetary intensive to bring the uh, uh, the uh, the good students uh, into the research that is very important so this things uh, are the important so this is from the student perspective another thing you are saying yes. uh, that how to so you know, one one important part i think is uh, mm. to question from uh, i mean okay so so the research facilities so uh, we have a little so tana you uh, actually asked me that what is the difference between um, uh, yes. uh, yeah in the toronto or mit with this india so one thing is that the research and academic culture i think we are lacking in those kind of the cultures uh because from a uh, research perspective you have a uh, the technology because the in scientific research in even the biology research the technology is going uh, to a top in every day because 20 years back the way you want to do a uh, plasmid preparation today people are doing using a robot to make those plasmid because you don't want to put your time there now if you see in our institutes we are also making the plasmids in the same way just using the pipette and something we need those kind of the robots and so what i'm trying to say we need this facility we have to increase the facility the in terms of uh, uh, facility and the money i mean research funding yes. uh, those are I, i though many people say there is we have a lot of research funding i don't think that uh, our research funding is enough maybe as a very whole i mean maybe the government are spending a lot and but there is a lot because in, uh, india is a very big country there is a lot of universities lot of research institutes and going when it is coming to a person it is not Uh, good enough so i think the funding has funding scenario um, has to be changed i don't know how it can be done but definitely that has to be um, uh, that has to be changed that's uh, that's my uh, uh, that's my opinion so sir do you also feel that campus interviewing should start even in the academic institutions after msc and as well as after phd yeah but the whole question is campus what is the meaning of the campus interview is a company so, will come yeah please yeah so you are right the company should come and then select and recruit out of the people they are available exactly now the whole question is we don't have enough company who is going to hire the phd students but because a, let's say i have a company and i want to hire but why i am going to hire and who i am going to hire it is com- completely from the uh, from their company's perspective so the if company thinks that we want to hire some phd definitely then they will go for uh, this kind of the uh, uh, this kind of the campusing so generally campusing happens in the engineering because uh, they are not going to take only one two students many times they takes like Three, four, five students almost every year. So those kind of uh, job uh, vacancy are not present uh, specifically in uh, 
the phd level so i don't think that uh, there is a phd level uh, 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 hiring happens in this kind of campus interview even in not in the engineering uh, nowhere else so i'm not very sure that uh, how campus interview is because let's say in iscb in your things there is a uh, hundreds of students or at least the 50s of the students are getting graduated every year and i don't think there is the companies who are going to take uh, those kind of so the campus interview in terms after the phd i i'm not very sure that if it is viable um uh, but msc it could be viable only so for example many people have a very different kind of uh, uh, so let's say biotechnology or pharmaceutical company so who gets the job in the pharmaceutical company it is not a biologist even yeah. not lots time is the pharmaceutics because a r and d section is completely full of organic chemistry people any if you take any mm -hmm. indian uh, thing and then they uh, recruit chemical engineer to run their reactors right so 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 they don't take the biotechnology students they maybe take one or two for something so we don't have enough biotechnology company who requires the skills of a biotechnology msc student so i don't so that is um, uh, 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 but many companies they take Uh, students, but doesn't matter. It's a biotechnology, a microbiology, or a chemistry, because they're just hiring some uh, uh, good people. So that is happened. But there is not a specific biotechnology. Uh, there's come, but not much. So I'm not sure that uh, how viable is this option uh, at this moment. I mean, sir, uh, the different diagnostic laboratories, or also at the same time, the different uh, hospitals who are into research, or uh, like the like the companies as that I know of are based in Kolkata, like GCC Biotech, or maybe uh, like um, Chem Biotech, or maybe something like BioRad, which have their hubs also here in West Bengal or something. I mean, some tie-ups. sometimes might help a student who is probably waiting after the phd to get a good suitable postdoctoral position uh, i mean a gap period like a stop gap yeah yeah so one thing okay so at this moment i was saying from a viability point of a company right the so why company yes. will go there but now what you are saying this is also correct so if this is the importance to actually uh, bridge the gap between this phd students in this company whatever at this moment as uh, you have now probably from the institute should start uh, a uh, i mean uh, a committee or something is, uh, who can connect with the gcc biotech and say that see this iic yes. has these good students you can actually take from them. and that is definitely an important because even in the from an uh, undergraduate uh, uh, engineering point of view the university or the institute they generally go also to they actually reach out to the various companies and say see this is our students they are very good uh, why why are not taking it so this kind of the things yes from definitely uh, from that perspective you are completely right that it is very important uh, um, uh, to make some this kind of uh, platform which you actually go to the different companies and uh, tell them this is about the students why are not going to take the students and that definitely true thank you tanaya <laughs> so sir uh, what would be your suggestion to the students uh for your take about... home message or something in general your about research about science about their uh, career goals like what should be your take home message for the students who wish to pursue career in science i think the, uh, the first thing uh, i believe again uh, i cannot claim this is the correct one or this is the best one but what i feel is it is very important to the love towards the science it is not the science technology whatever the career you want to pursue uh, it is very important to uh, love towards the science and then one important uh, so this is the very first thing and now if somebody is going to the for a phd program it is also important as i said uh, earlier uh, they're very easy to get frustrated because most of the time you won't get the results so that is why i said the love is very important second is you have to be very honest to yourself in terms of you really want to do a phd okay if it is correct okay so yes you love science and i want to do phd now you choose a problem okay do you think this problem is important if you are not very uh, honest to yourself about this it doesn't matter what other things 
but you have to very careful i mean you have to very careful about the choosing the problem do you think it is important because if you cannot connect the importance in terms of the whole science then uh, you always wonder that why i am doing this why i am working 10 now uh, 10 hours or 12 hours a day why i am doing so much microscopy experiment why so many gels nothing is coming out because the problem so after that whatever you are going to get in terms of a publication or in terms of your uh, uh, thesis and something that has to be uh, important so you have to find this important second thing how you are going to find this importance because when you are joining a phd lab and something you don't have the enough idea about what are the signs that are happening uh, throughout the world so i always suggest my students um, yeah, phd students and everywhere it is not to listen to a supervisor you there is a lot of other ways for example if you study the uh, nature and science okay uh, this they are coming every week right so you just go you don't have to study the whole uh, articles and something because they are not only the research journals but there are also magazines so you will see that what are the uh, uh, current scenario of the science what kind of the scenarios uh, what kind of the research are happening because they have a lot of uh, those science and nature they have a lot of uh, uh, articles which are uh, very lucid and for all of us so so from there you can actually get an idea what are the uh, cutting edge science uh, are doing so probably you want to uh, choose a direction or a problem which will going to flourish in next uh, 20 years or so because when you are an expert on that that time that's in flourish so you will be the, will make some contribution so this is important before choosing that uh, uh, to study a little bit that what how the world science is going so you have to there is nothing called indian science there is only science is an international either you make uh, 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 make a positive contribution to the world science or you are not doing there is nothing called uh, someone pioneer in india someone doing in india this is the first time in india this nothing matters it's only matters internationally so if you really want to pursue the science you have to uh, uh, study a little bit about what are the science are going not only on your subject but the other subjects too then you can actually connect the various scientific problems with your scientific problems and you can see even if you are your uh, uh, expertise what you are gaining from this uh, uh, your phd you can apply in many many fields so this is a uh, very important uh, i feel great so uh, anybody from the audience if any one of you have a question anyone okay so we have one question from the audience um Okay, connections. Yeah, please go ahead. So the synthetic biology is a new branch. Even if I want to know more about this, where can I get this exposure? Because most ISOs and IOPs they don't entertain students without JRF. So what can I do in that case? So. your question is you want to get some exposure uh, uh, of synthetic biology uh, uh, and you said the isas and iit what they don't have sorry they don't entertain students without uh, jrf like uh, do you have to qualify some type of national exams for those to get admitted oh, so, to those institutes so you you are saying that uh, uh, sorry you are an undergraduate so no i am not an undergraduate actually i am doing my msc right now because uh, but i want to take time to think whether i am suitable for phd work so before that if i can get exposure in some type of lab lab based work so it can um, make me feel confident whether i am even even i want to do phd or i want to join some industry like uh, where can i get those exposures Yeah, and yeah. if i want to know more about this field particularly the field you are talking about uh, what can i do because i am little excited to know about this more okay i think but you you are completely in the correct way because you uh, before you doing the phd you want to get a feel about this research and this is very important uh, because this is i am sure that uh, this is the correct part 
so uh, uh, so if you are doing the msc so for example uh, if you go to the uh, so there is a kind of a project assistant position you can get uh, uh, many uh, many institutes right so i'm coming to the synthetic biology but in in general i'm saying let's say you want to do a, a, a uh, research experience in, in some field of the biology. So there is a lot of research institute, the CSIR labs, uh, uh, even the IITs and ISAs, they also take, so not for the PhD, uh, I mean, if you go for a project assistant position, many times they have a project assistant position. So you can actually, you can, you, you have to write to the individual faculty whose research you like, and then write and see, but probably you have to write like uh, uh, 25 uh, faculties, uh, or uh, I don't know, maybe 30 faculties and one will respond uh, with a positive thing. So that is, so that's why the others, uh, that, that's why the people are doing. Uh, so there is a lot, you see the CSIR uh, labs, you go for the uh, NCBS, TIFR, uh, our institute SINP. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, institutes, and definitely the IITs and SINP go for the go direct talk to direct email the faculties directly. And second, when you're talking about the synthetic biology, so now uh, I think uh, 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 there are few people uh, in India are working on the synthetic biology. So what you can go, uh, okay. Very recently, in this month, uh, uh, there's something called the Sastra magazine. The IIT Madras is started uh, 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 a uh, kind of uh, a magazine for the science and technology in India. So this uh, this month's uh, issue, they are talking about the synthetic biology. So if you go there, so you'll find what are the labs are working kind of in the synthetic biology. So you can actually find those and then, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can find uh, you can find those and actually apply directly to that. So I can say you can look at the IIT Madras. Uh, if you go to the biotechnology faculty, you can go to the uh, IIT Kharagpur, um, uh, the energy science uh, department, as well as the biotechnology uh, department. Uh, you can go to the Bombay IIT uh, chemical engineering and the biotechnology department. Uh, uh, definitely the SINP and uh, some other uh, some other institutes. Uh, I mean, if I say would be a long list but yeah many people are working so we can actually do that so you can get and fill up the synthetic biology but i i will have another uh, uh, kind of suggestion so let's say you want to do in the synthetic biology not necessary you have to uh, do a one year internship in the synthetic biology i mean definitely if you get a synthetic biology position at uh, any of these labs for a one year that is great uh, but if it is not, but still you want to go to synthetic biology, it is important to have a research exposure. Uh, if you go to other labs, any other biological lab, who are working on the biology and uh, or the related field, that would be also good enough to get you an idea about the research itself. Then you can actually, for your PhD, if you decide to, you want to go to the for the PhD, you can actually directly. I mean, the, later you can go to the PhD in the synthetic biology. So it is not important that I mean, if you get the position in the synthetic biology at this moment, is very good. If it is not, you do uh, one year of uh, research in any other biology. Then you feel a great thing about the uh, the idea of the research, and that is most important than the synthetic biology itself. And you can start reading because if you just Google is a good thing, right? If you in the Google you write some synthetic biology, you will get a uh, uh, lot of different kinds of uh, resources on that. So uh, the idea you are going to get from that, what are the uses? I, I didn't talk about the what are the areas where synthetic biology can actually make. It is completely everywhere, starting from the space, starting from the materials, starting from the medicine, and then uh, the chemicals, then uh, robotics, then uh, anywhere. Whatever you think, you can say synthetic biology can have uh, some effect uh, the way it can feel. So uh, that's my answer. Thank you, sir. So um, I have some questions, Tanaya, if I may. Yes, please. Yeah. Ah. Um, before I start, like I would like to also uh, check with the audience. Uh, does anyone have any more question that would like to ask? Feel free to just raise your hands. All right, so I can go ahead. So, um, 
Thank you, sir. Uh, one of the things that I realized when I was looking at your lab website is uh, the interest in the space biology something. And um, I, you have also briefly mentioned about Mars. So, uh, and I also see that uh, with SpaceX and other things, uh, really, uh, like there's a push towards taking humanity to Mars and starting a colony there. So, um, how, what do you think about uh, this uh, exciting possibility that we start uh, our life, uh, like humans starting to colonize a new uh, planet and how, what kind of uh, like advances or um, uh, let's say uh, research areas that are going to open up uh, and where synthetic biology can play a role to help us get there? So, um, so if I, uh, so y y your question is like, uh, uh, what are the avenues of the research on this, uh, the space biology, which go to the column? I think the whole idea of the, I, I'm not very sure that at this moment, anyone is thinking um, in a particular viable sense to colonize the Mars. I think that is not the idea for this moment. I think the whole idea is to make a research base so that we can actually understand uh, the, the Mars a uh, little more. So uh, that is itself is a big challenge. It will uh, probably take uh, uh, many years, uh, uh, at least uh, another 20, 30, or even 50 years. We uh, really don't know. So to do that, I mean, because if you can see in the space travel, or specifically the human space travel, it consists a lot of different technological challenges because it is uh, uh, connected to the lot of uh, technology which is coming from the mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, space engineering itself, and uh, uh, electronics, computer science, and so on, so on, the communications and everything. And another thing to, if you want to send the man with that, you need a lot of biological things. So. Uh, uh, there is there is not a research program which is directly uh, connected to uh, going uh, i mean uh, a research program which is designed for uh, mars i mean you want to have a trend but there's all all common field like as i said like a lot of chemical engineers are working uh, towards uh, making the life support system uh, on the space because uh, 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 because you know that I mean all the materials the human waste you want to make them used uh, uh, and uh, so, so you want a completely zero uh, uh, zero discharge cycle so so a lot of chemicals so there are all things are going but there is not a very direct thing which is connected to the uh, uh, the Mars I think if someone is so in a synthetic as I said so in for example in my lab what we are working is the same synthetic genetic circuits. I mean, similar kind of the principles you are using to make uh, uh, to make computers out of the uh, engineered bacteria. At the same time, we develop the first microgravity biosensor, which can be connected, which can connect the microgravity as a physical signal with any biochemical process. Now, it looks completely different, but there is the same fundamental. Uh, principle. So the students who are working on the uh, particular uh, this uh, microgravity related things, they can easily do this kind of computation uh, with the bacteria. And the students who are doing this, uh, making the computer out of bacteria, they can easily do this kind of uh, a microgravity sensor. So I think the so if anyone wants to do okay, someone is maybe interested on this uh, uh, making this uh, Mars or something. So the very first thing, I mean, in terms of the synthetic biology, his uh, or her uh, background should be let's say a PhD in the synthetic biology, anything. And when you have these tools, then you can actually do uh, you can do a specific problem related to the Mars. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh for that. Uh, I also have a question with respect to science communication part because uh, even uh, like if we consider uh, let's say synthetic biology as a field where we do genetic engineering but at a larger scale uh, uh, as you might know the genetically modified crops which are having fairly very basic uh, implementation of genetic engineering with just one more expressor line or something still undergoing a lot of regulatory trouble and mistrust among the public 
and uh, we at ngs have also are interested in science communication side of things and uh, what, like you as a pa and also uh, someone who does a lot of synthetic biology and you have mentioned that uh, several manufacturing process uh, in the future where we shift towards the synthetic biology side how do you see uh, science communication could be done better uh, both like ngos from us and as well as from the government because there are already certain government program for science communication but according to me we haven't really done any good job with respect to science communication so where do you see where we are missing and what we can do uh, to do better science communication that yeah i think that what you said is absolutely correct so science communication is highly highly important basically uh, uh, so if you see the our culture uh, our academic culture is not much of the science prone culture because science is somehow is uh, somehow absent in our culture even um, uh, 20 years back uh, we could not see even a science news in any newspaper nowadays we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, science news that is a very good thing and to actually the common to engage the common public it's not just the student but the other common public to know about the science to get uh, what is happening in the science it is very important so in terms of the science communication i feel there are two things the scientist themselves should come and actually uh, uh, take some lead in the science communication because um, uh, for example uh, 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 like many scientists are just to do science and the, do the science research papers but it is also important that if they can talk with the uh, uh, school students they can write uh, some essays in the newspapers about the uh, science in their field what is happening in this world what is i mean then this is a very important part so the uh, contribution from the indian scientific community in the science communication is uh, an uh, important aspect uh, i do feel uh, another aspect i do feel is uh, specifically i mean this is uh, this helps because i don't know that how my science is connected to the common people i mean directly uh, but i found so many times uh, uh, our work has been uh, featured in some newspapers so when it happens so i i found very happy i mean my whole lab feel very happy from the one point of view is that that whatever the science we are doing i mean when it is coming in the newspaper means that people can connect with that so this is so, so the whole point is that whatever the science we are doing in the india so either is the synthetic biology or anything that should be connected to the common people because common people doesn't even know that what is happening in terms of the science in india Oh, so i think indian perspective to come in the communication is uh, one important thing uh, i do believe and all the scientists uh, should come uh, and contribute there okay uh, thank you for uh, that tanay if you may allow i have two more questions to follow yes yeah, sure. sure sure okay. so um Oh, one thing that you routinely mentioned about uh, while you are doing phd as well as uh, when people do research is uh, about uh, doing 12 hour days and uh, uh, as well as working on the weekend and um, recently I, whenever i use twitter i also see a lot of uh, academics complaining about uh, work life balance and how to you know figure this out and uh, as a pa uh, like how would you advise a graduate student to uh, like Uh, you know how they can maintain that balance and be stay productive for a longer time uh, having uh, like supervised uh, several students as well as done research yourself how do you manage to do that and how what can we do better to maintain our work life balance that is why i first time in sent so i take the students in my lab who are really interested on the problem on the aspects uh, not the exact problem but let's say in the synthetic biology or what kind of the problems we do the first thing what i give uh, things that he has he or she has to be interested really interested from their heart so before in our institute we uh, don't directly take the students for the students actually uh, come through a central interview process and then the way students are got admitted then the faculty starts talking with them so in my case it, the whole thing is that they are 
interest so we talk a lot about the sense for a long time like two to three months if they got really interested uh, in that sense so there's come so this is the very first point i feel that uh, mm, they go they definitely get frustrated because if they are not getting results but they are not going to depressed so this is the uh, first point second point is the i think uh, what let's say in either university of toronto or mit so we starts our day from a uh, uh, early in the morning so we used to start our lab like uh, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning okay and then you can go till like five uh, or seven that is the 10 hours but even after going five and uh, to seven i mean uh, five uh, pm you have still enough time uh, left for your social uh, gathering going to a movie uh, if you have uh, any date and so on so on things right so but here i found the problem is a student at least in my institute and probably is the problem is in kolkata too they starts their day very late they come like they think it's as a 10 to 5 or 10 to 7 job. So if you start your day at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, then even if you work for the 10 hours, so if you start at 10 o'clock, your 10 hours is kind of 8 o'clock. And after that, you cannot do anything. So I think this is one of the problem in, at least in Kolkata, the students are facing because they feel that their whole time actually gone. If you start your day from 7 o'clock or the 8 o'clock and you finish everything by 5 or 6, then you have enough time left to actually do all your family life, all things and, uh, and those things. So I, I think this is uh, very important. So I don't, at least nobody actually uh, tell me from my lab. Maybe they, I don't know what they feel, but uh, they are not, uh, they have a very good uh, uh, family life and work life balance because one of my, um, students uh, uh were the first students so uh, she uh, got married and then uh, uh, she had a, a child and she's doing the best of the science in my lab so i think uh, it is to uh, learn from her also how a kind of a uh, how she's managing that so this is a very important i think and to work life balance as you said so uh, I think these are two factors. Uh, if you can do that, then uh, work-life balance is not a problem. Thank you, sir. That was quite useful. And I have a last question for you. Having looked at your website, I found several projects to be uh, very interesting. And I also think that several students uh, who might have gone through your lab website will find it uh, likewise. So um, I would uh, highly encourage you that uh, whenever students approach you for uh, internship portions, uh, for summer uh, that you also uh, ask them to apply for NGOs of internship program so that uh, we can fund their stay in your lab by paying monthly stipends and as well as uh, covering for the, uh, the travel expenses if they move from a different city. So this is something that I also wanted to um, ask you to do that so that it will be good for us as well that they can uh, benefit from our program. Yeah, I think the only one point is uh, important here because uh, many institutes are work uh, their own by their own rules. So, for example, in my institutes uh, after this uh, epidemic, it is not happened that it is not regularized the summer program yet, and uh, for different reason they have uh, uh, for different administrative reason uh, uh, they have their own summer program. So definitely people can apply through that. But uh, from other state, I. I mean, not the other state, I mean, from the other, this kind of the science, uh, 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 what kind of internship you are saying. Uh, nowadays, we are not that, uh, not taking many internship. I think that's an, some administrative uh, thing after this corona. I'm sure that that will be lifted to, uh, by this year or so. Then, then definitely uh, we can accommodate people. Thank you, sir. So that's it from my side, Tanya. Also. Yeah. So, Tanya, I think we are not able to hear you. So, why? you can probably disconnect and connect back and uh, rest of the audience do you, if you have any question there's a final call you can ask them directly 
Hello, am I audible now? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Sir, I have uh, one. One more question, like uh, how much feasible is it to uh, shift field during the postdoc? I mean, uh, let's say someone is doing PhD in one particular aspect of biology. Uh, what are the chances that uh, that person can get into uh, synthetic biology lab during the postdoc? I think this is a very important question. And one message, if I want to, I mean, you said take home message you are saying. The take home message is you can feel, you can shift the fields anytime. So what actually obstruct, what is the obstruction of changing the field? It is our own fear. Somehow, uh, somebody told us that I cannot go from here to there, which is completely uh, what I found uh, uh, not just from uh, my experience, but many people's experience, okay, that this is not the case mm -hmm. anytime. So for example, I mean, uh, so you are doing biology. Now, if you want to go to some different kind of the, forget about the biology, you want to do some kind of the chemistry, you can go there. Somebody chemist doing chemistry and want to do definitely the mechanical engineering, they can do that. So this is not an, an, and the postdoc is the uh, field where, for example, if you, uh, 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 so the tools in the synthetic biology, what people use, the tools are the same molecular biology, genetic engineering tools. The tools are not changing that much. What is changing is the concept. That, so you have to take some engineering concept and put in the biology to make the things. So definitely it is not the genetic engineering, the large scale as uh, Ram tried to do that. So basically it's a design based uh, biological engineering. So you have a design and so, so that is, it is, so, so you have uh, some biological experience, you go, so let's say you are working on a mammalian cell. So that is important because you have a mammalian cell uh, uh, um, experience and then many people are doing synthetic biology in the mammalian cells so uh, you can apply them and they can take from uh, from yours you don't have to be a synthetic biology in the phd to get in a, a postdoctor in the synthetic biology so uh, yeah so the shifting the fields from any fields to other fields is uh, feasible and it is doable uh, definitely in the postdoc things it is completely doable great Okay, so are there any more questions? Okay, so if there are no more questions, I would like to thank sir for joining us today for this wonderful discussion. It was really a pleasure to have you with us, sir.